We're going to look at the book of Mark, chapter 14, and we're going to read verse uh, 36. Mark, chapter 14, and we will read verse 36. Now, before I read this passage, I'm going to debunk the idea that God's name is Yahweh. Yahweh. How many Christian organizations you keep hearing saying Yahweh, Yahweh? So I want people to understand this, is that Yahweh is not the name of God. You got to uh, avoid using this. Because the more Christians use this term Yahweh, what you're doing is that you're supporting more of the liberals. Now you might say, why is that, Pastor? Because liberals in their college classes teach that how Christianity and Judaism got their name of God is that it's not from their own religion, it's not from their own God. They borrowed it through pagans. That's what they have to argue. So in order to argue they, the Abraham and Moses got some tribal pagan God name out of nowhere for the name of their God, they have to mention this, Yahweh. Because liberals teach that this came from a pagan tribal God. It's a desert god, they would call it. Some sort of desert pagan tribal god, which is why Abraham, a desert tribe, started his nation. Moses and the people, desert tribe, uh, started their nation. So it came, they borrowed it from some sort of desert god. Can I tell you something? My god did not borrow his name from yeah. some kind of Amen. desert Amen. pagan nobody. Now, I was in liberal classes at Berkeley, and they taught that. And when I heard that, I knew this before the liberals taught this in college. I knew that. But when I heard it at UC Berkeley, that confirmed my belief even more. And guess what? The professor was a Jew as well. So don't say that I don't know what I'm talking about here using Hebrew. You can even look up Wikipedia. Didn't you know that? Even Wikipedia, an amateur source, realizes a basic fact like that. So let me read it right here. Yahweh was the national god of the Iron Age kingdoms of Israel and Judah. His exact origins are disputed, although they reach back to the early Iron Age and even the late Bronze. His name may have begun as an epithet of El, head of the Bronze age Canaanite pantheon, but the earliest plausible mentions are in Egyptian texts that place him among the nomads of the southern Transjordan. Here's one source from William G. Denver at 2003b. The article is, Who Were the Early Israelites and Where Did They Come From? So you're going to find out right here that in that source, they're claiming that, now remember, who's before Christians? The Israelites. That these Israelites borrowed it from some kind of nomadic tribe out of nowhere, out of the desert, the name of their God, Yahweh. That's even found at, I gave you the documentation, and you can even look up Wikipedia if you doubt me. Now the thing is this, is that, okay, then... Uh, how did we get this idea? We got this idea at the book of Exodus because basically this is supposedly his Hebrew name. But you got to realize this. In Hebrew to English, it's not Yahweh. It's disputed. The King James Bible calls it Jehovah. Jehovah. It's Jehovah. And if I'm going to translate that from Hebrew to English, I'm not going to say Yahweh. I'm say Jehovah. Now the thing is this, is that how this translation comes out is that the KJV word, English, I'm talking about English, not Hebrew, okay? English was translated from Latin, which in turn was translated to he from Hebrew. See that? That is normal through correct translation processes. That's a matter of fact of translation processes with scholars. Now, one example is if you look at Acts 7. Acts 7, it mentions Jesus took the Jews to the promised land. Well, obviously, it's not our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's Joshua. But that's a normal translation from Hebrew to Greek and from Greek to what we have right here in our English King James Bible. So that is normal. So this is not an inaccurate translation when some people try to say this is inaccurate. J didn't come out till later in the centuries. Well, yeah, because we're in 2018. 
And this J thing came out through translation, from translation, from translation. Okay? That's just a common sense fact. Now look at Mark chapter 14 and verse 35. Verse 35. Now, a lot of people, they want to say this. What they're going to argue is that, well, you know, I want to use the language Jesus used when he talked to the Father. And Jesus, he spoke Hebrew. And, suppose, and because he spoke Hebrew, wouldn't it be best that I spoke Hebrew like Jesus too? Well, I'm going to debunk that notion. Because one, this word is disputed still, you got to understand, about translation from Hebrew. Because you got to realize this from Hebrew translation, there are no vowels. There are no vowels. So that's why we're wondering. So what you see is just a consonant. Ya wa. See? But because it's a ya wa, we don't know if it's going to be that J sound because it's a, I, a iota concept. Okay, I, I know that you don't understand that, but okay, but just forget that. I'm just going Hebrew and Greek right here. It's like an iota co uh, concept, so it can go Y or J right here. Yo wa, like that. Yo wa. So it could go either or. See that? English, I can prove it though because it was it went from Latin, from Hebrew, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This one. You don't have utmost proof because it's disputed. There's no vowels right here. So it could be either or. Now, here's the thing is that if you want to use the language Jesus used, then look at right here, Mark 14, 35. And, when, and he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed. When Jesus prayed, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. How did he address God? And he said, Yahweh. There's even the Hebrew word there for you if you want Hebrew. What? Abba, what? You know what Jesus said when he prayed to God? When he prayed to God, you know what you're going to see most of the time? I thought you want to be a follower of Jesus. And he's using Hebrew here too. You know what he mostly used? Father. Wouldn't God the Father prefer that kind of relationship more anyways? Of a son and father talking to him. But look at Galatians 4. If you don't believe me, look at Galatians 4. Since that is the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, those two witnesses compel you to also cry out, Father, in your spirit. Well, there's something in me that wants to say Yahweh. No, that's not some clean spirit right there. If it came from this kind of a God, then you got some kind of spirit. The spirit that should compel you to say God's name would be this one. Where did this come from? Now look at Galatians chapter 4. We will read verse 6. If you don't believe me, this is what the Bible says. Bible, don't, don't listen to me. And because ye are sons, see that you're a son, God has sent forth the what? Spirit of his son into where? Your heart crying within your spiritual nature. Jesus and the Holy Spirit compel you. And God also himself, the Father, the whole Trinity, compel you to cry out what? Abba, Father, but no, you keep using this one. I thought you're a follower of Jesus. You wanted to do what Jesus said. If you want to do what Jesus said, you should ignore what scholars and preachers are saying and not listen to them. Where did you get that idea? Jesus said this. That, the, no, the Bible never said that. The Bible said Jesus said this. Which pastor you were listening to? Okay, look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. When the disciples even asked Jesus to pray, teach them to pray, you know what Jesus even said? How he taught them to pray? Make sure you say Yahweh. No. You know, because it's a famous prayer, right? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. It's a famous prayer. Verse 2. Matthew chapter 6 and uh, verse 9. Excuse me, verse 9. After, uh, uh, well... Yeah, verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, what? Our Father. Jesus instructed and taught you to say what? This, not what? Where did this come from? By the way, this isn't... When Jesus was teaching right here, the New Testament right here is translated to Greek. This is not Yahweh right here in the Greek New Testament, you got to understand. Now let's keep going to Acts 2. This is utmost proof. Go to Acts 2. 
Now, I'm going to have to wrap it up right here, so I'm going to jump to Galatians 2 as well. If you're fast enough, jump to Galatians 2. And then, uh, but I want you to go to Acts chapter 2, all right? I want you to go to Acts chapter 2. If you're fast enough, then jump to Galatians 2. All right, I'm going to go ahead and fire away with Acts 2, all right? Well, uh, I want to do what God wants. Do you believe in that? Do you believe in that? Amen. All right, who gave the languages? Was it you or God? God. If God gave you a language to call upon his name in that language, wouldn't he prefer you to use that? Now, let's look at Acts chapter 2, if you don't believe me. So, look at Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on what? Call on what? Name of the Lord, right? Okay, so it says name of the Lord here. So, Peter is preaching to them, and he mentions about them calling on the name of the Lord, right? Okay, calling on the name of the Lord. And you know how he's preaching it to them? In their own languages. Now look at Acts chapter 2. If you don't believe me, don't believe me. Look at verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in what? His own language. Wow. Verse 9, Parthians, Medes, Elamite, Dweller, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, do we hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God? Do you think they were all preaching Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh? Yeah. Or was in Hebrew or was it in their own language? And Peter told them that through this preaching process, calling on the name of the Lord. So use 1 plus 1 equals 2 right here, okay? What does 1 plus 1 equal, church? It equals 2. So let's, <laughs> 11 right there, you see? We got one guy saying Yahweh still. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So the point is right here is that God wants you to speak to him as son and father. He does not want you to be bound in some tradition of Judaism. God really hates that because in Galatians chapter 2, if you don't believe me, Galatians 2, what did the Bible say? What did Paul do? In verse 14, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, see that, doing what other foreign nations in their language do, and not as do the Jews, why compel us? This is what I want to say to ask to Messianic Jews. I want to ask these Yahweh people and all these guys. Why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the what? Jews. See, God does not like that. God, because who started the different languages? Was it Satan or God? He expects you to keep that division of languages, otherwise he wouldn't have done that. But I tell you who wants to do one world language. I'll tell you who wants to do one world language, one world government, all the nations combined. I don't have to say Antichrist right here. Y'all can guess right there. So you see right here... So no one is going to make me a Korean and, and preach against me and say, oh, you didn't say Jesus in English. You didn't say Yahweh. You didn't say uh, Yahushua or whatever, whatnot. That's, that's even a fairy tale name, okay? That's a made-up name, whatever, okay? So Yahshua, stuff like that. But anyway, so the thing is this. If, I'm going, if there's a Korean praying in Korean and he says, Yesunim, okay, don't bash him over the head. There's a Grecian saying, Jesus, don't bash him over the head. Don't bash a Hispanic person saying, uh, Jesus, and don't, so hey or ya ja or ja or whatnot, who cares? God wants you to speak in your language and talk to him in his language because he ordained the language, not you. And by violating and you to go to a selected kind of a language, yeah. it shows an elitist attitude and even, let's be honest, racism. That's right. Amen. Okay? God divided the languages and nations for a reason. He wants you to worship God in your language, in your nation. Amen. 